We're with Assemblyman Upendra Shivakula, who's running for Congress in the 7th Congressional District in New Jersey. Um, Assemblyman, uh, you're from a relatively safe district and, and one of the leaders of the General Assembly. Why are you running for Congress? Well, I, the, uh, running for Congress has always been my dream, and I started uh, looking at that a few years ago. And uh, the district I am currently coming from has been a Democratic incumbent. And so it has been a difficult time, but this, this year, opportunity came along in uh, District 7, where I have the opportunity to run for Congress, and I want to give it a full try to win this election. If you're elected, uh, chances are still that the House of Representatives will be under Republican control. How can you be effective as a freshman congressman? How can you reach across the aisle? See, one of the things is that uh, Congress, there are only five engineers, and, uh, and I will be the sixth engineer joining them. And as you know, engineers are problem solvers. It is not a problem, has, it's not a Republican problem or a Democratic problem. As long as you are able to, willing to reach out across the aisle, work with the Republicans and Democrats to, uh, as uh, one, and you are able to achieve results, which I have proven over the last 10 years, working in the state legislature in Trenton, that I can get things done. By, in a bipartisan manner. Getting into some issues that are uh, at the front burner, uh, let's talk about gun control. Uh, your opponent's website touts that he's got a 100% NRA voting record and he's opposed to renewing the federal assault weapons ban. How do we balance Second Amendment rights uh, with public safety? One of the key things about uh, Leonard Lance is that in 19, uh, 2008, when you look at Project WorldSmart uh, website, he was uh, not for guns. Now he has gone the, too far to the right, saying that uh, you can carry concealed weapons in national parks, which is uh, mostly dangerous for the people who are uh, visiting the national park. I think uh, when you look at the Second Amendment rights, uh, uh, militia is allowed to, you know, organized militia are allowed to carry guns, and not it is not intended for people who are living in urban areas to be carrying concealed guns, which is uh, which puts the public at risk. And uh, as, as long as it is a responsible ownership of uh, guns, I don't have any problem with that. But I think uh, when you are carrying uh, concealed weapons in uh, crowded places, in urban areas, that is, poses a problem to public safety and the quality of life of the people. Another issue that's important to a lot of your constituents is taxes and the economy. Uh, the governor has been touting the Jersey comeback, even though the state lags the nation in employment. What could you do in Congress that would help New Jersey's unemployment rate? I think one of the starting points is the Simpson-Balls Commission report, where it talks about trying to see how we can balance the budget and cut down the debt over a period of time, and at the same time investing in the economy so that way you can grow the economy and create jobs, which are very much needed because we are in a global recession. We are trying to come back and trying to create the jobs. Uh, that's why you need to have the investment as well as uh, trying to tighten your belt so that way over a period of time you can cut down the debt and balance the budget. And uh, th that is the most important thing. Yeah. The Republicans have uh, held the uh, defense budget as sacrosanct in terms of balancing the budget. Where do you stand on that? Well, I, I think the balancing the budget is important, but I think at the same time, we have uh, made promises to our senior citizens and various uh, 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 constituents that we are going to do certain things. We have an obligation to honor those commitments, and uh, we can do that over a period of time. If we can balance those interests, we should be able to balance the budget. So would, would you be in favor of targeted cuts in the defense budget? I, I think you know the, the cuts cannot be you know with a chainsaw. They should be uh, you know trying to be surgical knife. You have to have surgical cuts, and we need to make sure there are programs. For example, if you are investing a lot of money in nuclear programs, you know under President Reagan, you have invested a lot of money in the Star Wars programs. And uh, when uh, the first Gulf War took place, that time we were only able to use the weapons that were produced under President Carter, the conventional weapons. We were not able to use the nuclear weapon. So we should think uh, about our strategy, how we want to invest in nuclear weapons. Another hot issue is immigration reform that will come up in the next Congress. Um, as someone who's gone through the process, what needs to be done in Congress to achieve a fair and equitable immigration program? I think that it has to be a comprehensive immigration reform. You know, while you are, everybody is in agreement how to handle the high end, 
basically skill-based uh, immigration, you are able to handle that. When it comes to there are 12 million undocumented immigrants in the United States, and how do you deal with that? And if you talk to farmers who have difficulty finding uh, workers, uh, whether it's uh, in Kansas or whether it's in uh, Buffalo, New York, uh, trying to get uh, workers, it has been a challenge. So we need to think about creating some temporary work programs so that way people can uh, uh, meet the needs of the business as well as the agri agriculture and at the same time uh, come up with a way to for them to work here and uh, stay here legally and uh, pay the taxes so that way we don't have the other citizens have, don't have to bear the burden of paying for their benefits so. would you be in favor of some sort of limited amnesty for those that are already here i think we need to think about that uh, because so what happens is that uh, some of the people let's say a lot of children who came here when they were three years old or four years old only country they know is the united states and the uh, united states is a nation of immigrants have attracted people from Europe and other countries in the world and uh, where uh, if you look at them they all came a lot of them did not have the papers but they had to go through the process in Ellis Island so th this is a times are different now we have issues with respect to borders and uh, we have a program that are trying to restrict people crossing the borders illegally and there's tremendous investment is being made at the same time we have to address the issue of the people who are here they are contributing to the into the economy if you have certain people who are working and uh, renting apartments and they're trying to buy things in the local stores that is going to help i think we need to figure out a way to give them opportunity to as long as they are not criminal they have not committed any violent crime we should create a mechanism for them to uh, somehow integrate into the mainstream society the new jersey general assembly recently passed a law that would punish new jersey companies that do trade with iran um, what should Congress and the President do with regard to Iran's nuclear program? Well, in the Iran situation is a very complicated situation. I think what New Jersey has done is if they are doing business in Iran in, the, in terms of bonding and all that, we need to make sure that uh, we want to prohibit so that way we send a message to Iran so that way they do not uh, invest in uh, chemical weapons or uh, uh, nuclear uh, weapons. I, I think that's a, a good idea, but I think we need to have both uh, diplomacy as well as uh, uh, some kind of uh, sanctions that they need to put so that way we have to monitor that. Just uh, having only sanctions alone is not going to work. We have to have a, a dialogue and we need to understand the geopolitical situation. Accordingly, we need to balance our nation's interests. Moving closer to home, on your website, one of the taglines is, education is the greatest equalizer. At the state level, much of the attention has been given to schools outside the traditional public school system. What should be the role of the federal government in public schools, charter schools, and for-profit school operators? I think the federal government, uh, what happens is that when e each and every state, they have their own educational standards. When you are comparing uh, one state with the other, the comparison, uh, comparisons have been unequal. So we need to come up with some national standards so that we measure all the schools the same way. And uh, of course you have to work with the states and uh, we have to honor the, uh, and respect the states' right, uh, rights. And then we need to also think about uh, how to address this issue about uh, improving the public education. I think most of the people, whether uh, whatever level they may be, they have been educated in a public school system. Without a, a good, working, efficient public school system, we will not be able to meet the demands of our children with the private schools alone. You've been, uh, you've established for yourself a reputation as being the go-to person in the Assembly for issues on energy and the environment. Um, how can we, as a nation, overcome our dependence on foreign energy sources without impacting jobs? I think the first realization we must have is that uh, energy policy, energy issue is a national security issue. When you look at, uh, when you're sending billions of dollars every day to overseas to hostile nations and uh, uh, without having a self-reliant energy policy, that is not a good thing. So we need to address the issue of renewable energy sources, whether making use of sun and wind and biomass, and there are many sources that we can make use of. At the same time, trying to use energy efficiency, energy conservation, we can come up with the policies that can help uh, grow these industries. 
a lot of the countries uh, have uh, invested in uh, green economy and uh, trying to take the green economy and make it a sustainable economy. That should be the goal. And the federal government has missed the opportunity so far. I think we can't afford to be delaying it any further. We should get, uh, get to work and come up with an energy policy that is, uh, addresses both the national security as well as the self-reliance and um, taking advantage of the, uh, the natural gas supply that we have uh, realized recently. Last question. Can you share with Blue Jersey viewers uh, your uh, impressions of running for an office uh, at the federal level and how is the campaign going and, and what's your path to victory? No, it's been a tremendous experience so far and uh, of course you know, when you are trying to run for political office you have to raise a lot of money which is uh, it comes with hard work and also meeting the people whether it's the train stations or bus stops and also trying to knocking on the doors and meeting the people and uh, taking the business walks and meeting with the businesses and understanding their issue it's a tremendous tremendous uh, educational opportunity and how do you take that education and to make it a good policy of course you have to first win the election and uh, i am uh, excited about the opportunity if I can get to the people the people get to know who I am as an engineer I can uh, well, do the problem solving I think that's the most there are too many lawyers in Congress I think we need to move away from the litigious society and think about how to solve the problems for average people and uh, Congress has forgotten that they are well, they've gone to the they have gone to Washington trying to take care of the national party interests rather than the people who have elected them there I think that's what I'm looking forward to doing in Washington. Assemblyman Shivakula, thank you very much and good luck.